Okay, uh, very good evening, or should I say a very good morning and good day to any everyone in the world who are watching this uh, website, this program. So this is our Astronomical Society of the Penang uh, session on Virtual Astro Cafe. So tonight, I'm, I'll be presenting, I'm Dr. Chong from the Astro Society of Penang. And we have another member of our, our society, a young member, uh, David To Jun Sian. So we'll be presenting on Space Station, Past, Present and Future. Let me present first. So David, can you see the PowerPoint? Yeah, I can see the PowerPoint. Okay. So I'm so excited uh, that, that uh, what they call Michael asked us to present this uh, this uh, uh, virtual cafe. So the title is so Michael is our host uh, for tonight. Space station, past, present, and future. Remember, in a sense, in a sense, the space, the first space station already was sent to space when Yuri Gagarin, 1961, in Warsaw One, the Soviet Union first manned spacecraft. So in a sense, he was already in space for one orbit, 19 minutes, uh, and he landed after one orbit. So that's in a sense a space station. But then, as in the later part of the, the, the what do you call the competition between the USA and the Soviet Union, they have longer stay in space. All right. So let's look at the, the, the early first space station. Look at the present space station first. David will show the first. Place. So here we show, wow, what is this? I really like the space station on the right. Now remember, in 1968, Stanley Kubrick, American film producer, produced a famous movie called 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, following the story by a science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke. And in the movie that came out in Malaysia in the 1970s, uh, I watched a movie many times in Penang, uh, that time I was a student in Penang, university student, USM. So this is the famous space station number five, space station five. So it's a, it's a kind of a wheel, all right? The diameter of each wheel uh, is 300 meters in diameter. Another wheel here, 300 meters in diameter. So in that movie, they will show you that this view is 300 meters in diameter. So how, how big is it compared to our ISS? Now remember ISS, the length is about one football field, 100 meters. But this is 300 meters. So in terms of area is three cube, no, three square. So this uh, area of this uh, torus here, this rotating uh, torus is nine times the size of the ISS. So in the movie, they will show you. So basically, in the year, in future, in the story, there's this permanent space station orbiting the Earth. The Earth is on the left, and this is rotating. And because it's rotating, rotating, you have a centrifugal force there. So I will later I'll show you inside. Huh? And because of the centrifugal force, because diameter 20 meters, it rotates one revolution in 61 seconds. And if you walk on the side of it, exactly 1G. So you have 65 kilogram on the Earth's surface. There also on the rim here, uh, on the edge of the circumference, you also weigh 65 kilogram. But of course, you travel closer and closer to the center, the, ex the axis to rotation, you come towards zero gravity. La. So this is a famous space station pie, uh, appeared in the movie theaters around the world since 1968. All right. Uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Wonderful story. So now we look at the present space station. Let me start off, uh, uh, Jun Zhen. So there are two now orbiting the Earth. Of course, since the 1990, uh, early 1990s, you have the ISS, International Space Station. It's so famous that we don't say International Space Station, ISS. And then you have also now orbiting the Earth, a newcomer, the Tiangong Space Station. All right. So Tiangong in China, Chinese means Heavenly Palace. So sometimes you call it the China Space Station, CSS. All right. Now remember, let's go to the first one. Uh, let me explain a bit. Later on, you can explain some of the ISS pictures. So basically, ISS has been there for a long time. So basically, most of the space is occupied by the solar, uh, solar cell. And it's here, you have all the modules inside here. All right, remember, it's a uh, height above the Earth's surface is about 400 kilometers. And it goes around the Earth once in about 90 over minutes. So most of the, the main space uh, uh, rocket around the Earth is about one and a half hours. Why? Because that's the, the orbit is closer to the Earth's surface. If you, you can put a, a man's, uh, what you call, rocket further up, but in case of any emergency, it's harder for them to come back to the Earth. So the closer, the better. So cannot be too low. 
Because you are, you are saying 200 kilometers, the Earth's atmosphere will cause a lot of resistance. So it will decay fast. So around 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface, it will orbit nicely. All right. So this is the interspace station. You have the uh, you have the solar cell. Okay. And then you have many modules. So basically the International Space Station now. Okay. This is the this is a patch of the ISS. All right. And there are many countries in the world have sent astronauts to the ISS. So basically what? It's a joint venture between NASA, America, Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency, JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, CSA, the Canadian Space Agency, ESA, the European Space Agency, and also the Brazilian Space Agency. So more than 200 over astronauts have been into the space station. Many, yeah? And this is another view of the ISS. So basically you have, it's made up of many, many modules, all right, joined together. So the first one is of course the 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 Zarya module and later on American Unity module and so on. So right now you have about 16 modules attached to each other. Right? So 16 modules and the weight of the whole ISS is about 440 tons. Alright. So basically, if we go back to the earlier uh, picture here, okay. So basically the length here is about 103 meters, so roughly 100 meters in length. The width is about 70 meters. So it's about a football field size, right? So this is a football field size space station, and it's the brightest object, man-made object in space, you know? So the magnitude, if uh, the alignment of the solar cell is just nice to reflect off sunlight, magnitude minus four. Magnitude minus four means it can look as, as bright as Venus, all right? Venus. So there are about 16 modules now, Eight modules are American modules, six modules are Russian module, two modules are Japanese module, and one, one module is this, uh, what they call, European Space Agency module, all right? That's all. So, uh, Junjian, do you want to continue now, the components of the ISS? Yeah, there are many different components of the ISS. Like, they are launched by different, different parts of, uh, they are launched by different people, basically, different countries, and... Some are launched by Russia, some are launched by the US, some are launched by Japan, and so on and so on. And they basically launch all these segments in small in small chunks into orbit. And once they go into orbit, they will dock with each other. So they connect all these small segments together and make one big object, some like a big Lego piece, maybe. And all the tubular sections that you see are basically crude sections. So those are those are the places that astronauts can stay in, can work in, and so on. And those solar panels over there, that those are unpressurized. So those are like exposed to the vacuum of space. So towards going from the outside in, you can see those four solar panels from the outside. You go inwards, and you can see three prongs sticking out to the to the front. And those are the radiators of the space station. Because the space station uses energy and because of the solar panels and because there are a lot of uh, components inside the space station that use uh, energy and they perform experiments and whatnot, it will produce a lot of heat. So they need a way to radiate the heat and maintain a comfortable living temperature and a good temperature for the components to work in. So they have those big radiators to uh, radiate heat out into space. So Junjian, can I go to the next picture? Yeah. Okay. So this is a name for some of the modules, huh? All right. Ah. Uh, so I just add on a bit, ah. Uh, uh, Junjian, let me talk first. So, uh, basically, it's a modular design. All future space stations have to be modular. There's no way they can send up the whole ISS 440, 440 tons at one go. Remember, in Malaysia, the weight of a uh, an average car is about one ton. You know, the ISS weigh 440 tons. And the total cost of the ISS, which is a big investment from America, Russia, Japan, and U uh, European Space Agency, Canadian Space Agency, is about 100 billion US dollars. Uh, so, so it's about 400 billion ringgit. All right? So it's a big investment. Right? So it's modular design. And it started to be constructed, uh, what do you call, in the, what do you call, 1999. And by about 2010, uh, 11 years later, it was more or less fully completed. But recently, the Russians sent in their Nauka module. Right? So they all together, the 16 modules I mentioned are all the pressurized module. So I go to the next one. Uh, you want to talk about this, Junjian? Inside the ISS? So 
inside the ISS, you can see in this picture there are many different components. I would not go into detail into what those are, but most of these are either uh, scientific experiments that are inserted into the walls or storage compartments. So a lot of these are very modular, like Dr. Chong said. So you can basically take out, you can take out a uh, a part of those experimental modules and swap, hot swap them basically, if it's made for if it's made for it. So astronauts will be able to live inside this module and work in this module comfortably. And of course, the ISS uh, used atmosphere exactly similar to the atmosphere on the Earth's surface. That means one atmospheric pressure and about uh, some, uh, wait. 21% uh, oxygen, 79% nitrogen. Exactly. So it does not mean that in a spacecraft in space, pressurized spacecraft, the atmospheric uh, uh, properties must be exactly on the Earth. Right? For example, the, the Apollo astronauts do not use a one atmospheric pressure in the, uh, in the Apollo module. They use less than that. But for this one, it's also one atmospheric pressure. So about 80% uh, nitrogen, 20% oxygen. And this is actually a uh, zero gravity. Right? And this is, uh, you want to talk about this, uh, Junjian, very interesting. Yeah. yeah, this is the very famous cupola module. So this module is basically like a, almost an entirely glass dome module. And you can see there are seven big windows uh, around the module. So these windows are relatively big. And astronauts will usually go into this module to either look at the Earth or perform some kind of capture maneuver. So... Sometimes spacecraft will go into the ISS, go near the ISS to dock, and sometimes it cannot autonomously dock. So that means they need to use the Canada arm to soft dock to capture it first, and then it will slowly bring it towards the space station for a hard capture. So astronauts will be in this module to oversee like where they need to move the arm and where do they need to capture this to perform it. I will, I will show uh, Junjian this. Uh, how about this one? There you are. Ah. <laughs> okay, this is an astronaut inside the Coppola module, and this is a very, very wide-angle camera. And you can see the astronaut is looking out towards the Earth, and you can see the overall circular. <laughs> you can see the curvature of the Earth from this module. It's very nice. It's a very nice photo. Oh, and the module itself has like seven window covers on the outside, so they're like leaf petals. And there is a knob that you can turn on the inside, that will close those seven petals. So when the astronauts go to sleep at night and when they are not uh, overseeing the space station, they will close all the windows to prevent macrometeorites or any space debris from hitting the windows and breaking the windows. So if, if I'm sure some of the astronauts, uh, men and women, uh, in their free time, they'll spend many, many, a lot of time uh, teasing at the Earth passing underneath. Fantastic. Like picture, nice. huh? don't you know that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This this is the candida arm, I think. Yes. It looks like the candida arm. So the candida arm has a few uses. One of it is the soft capture and the hard capture to the space station. The other is to help astronauts do some maintenance jobs on the space station. For example, there may be some kind of leak in the cooling system and the leak may be somewhere um, not, not, very not very accessible by handrails to the astronauts. So they will use the candida arm to maneuver the astronaut to that area for them to perform the maintenance job. Of course, now I think it's expedition number 56. Uh, ISS expedition number 56. Where there are seven human beings in space. Uh, some are American, some are Russian. And one of them is an uh, American woman astronaut. All right, next one. And then I'll explain this. Now, this is the show. Uh, and it's the size of the solar panel, very big, you know. So one astronaut is on the end of the Canada arm, which is built by Canada. And then you see how small is the astronaut compared to the solar panel. Now remember, the, the Canada arm by itself is very heavy, you know. On the Earth's surface, the, the, the motor that can leap, that can support to rotate and make this arm work, huh, cannot work. Because on the Earth's surface, it's very heavy. But in space, this arm do not have any weight. Uh, then it's, it move, can move easily, right? So this is the astronaut at the end of Canada arm towards the uh, solar cell. Uh, I think it must be made out of silicon, uh, single crystal sil silicon solar cell. All right uh, inside, uh, Junjian, I'll explain. Uh, these are the crew quarters where they would either work or just spend their free time. This looks like the work quarters because of all the screens and the laptops in the in the walls. 
So everyday astronauts are assigned some tasks or some experiments they need to perform. And usually this is where they perform this. Also, they have, you can see a few laptops on the walls there. And one of the, one of the things they will do is they can have like family conferences using the laptop and you can see them in space. For example, if your friend goes into space, in the, the space station, if they video call you, you can see them. And <laughs> yeah. I just want to add on. Huh? Now remember, of course, most people will, will know that, oh, this is in space. Huh? So therefore, inside the, the space here is called zero G, zero gravity condition. So this zero G is actually a wrong use. Huh? But people are still using it, including newspaper reporters. The gravity or, or at, the, at the height of the space station, 400 kilometers, is still 88% the strength of gravity as compared to the Earth's surface, you know? So in other words, the strength of the Earth's gravity here is about 88% the strength of gravity on the Earth's surface. The only thing is that this woman astronaut, this woman astronaut, this man astronaut, and the, all the space station is orbiting, orbiting around the Earth in the same direction at the same speed. So they are all free falling around the Earth. So they do not have any weight. That doesn't mean they have no, no gravity. It's still about 90% of the gravity compared to the Earth's surface, you know. But because of free falling, you don't feel the weight. And then why do they use the word? The other uh, name they can use, I would say is correct. In this uh, in this uh, ISS, in the space car, it's called microgravity. So what do you mean by microgravity? Microgravity means the strength of gravity here. Uh, actually, gravity, you can replace by the word acceleration. So the acceleration here is very small, right? For example, is that even the wall of the ISS is, has mass can attract the astronaut, you know? So if the astronaut is free hanging in the air like that, even upside down, let's say this part of the right side of the wall is, is more massive than the left side of the wall, the, the mass can attract the, the astronaut there, all right? And then let's say if the, the outside of the ISS is hitting the Earth's atmosphere, and there's a bigger air resistance in the Earth's atmosphere. So inside the ISS, a, a, a floating astronaut can feel the motion, the acceleration. So that's the mean by microgravity, all right? Very small acceleration here. And it can come in any direction, microgravity, all right? So this is another view of the ISS. But I think this is not uh, the, the... Now, this is the real ISS. This is the real ISS, all right? And you can see here... One of the uh, the Russian Soyuz module docked into ISS, or remember the Soyuz module from the rocket from uh, from uh, Russia sent uh, from Kazakhstan by Kono uh, Cosmodrome is for crew mission with human being. The similar rocket with materials and cargo is called the Progress spaceship. Huh? Anything to add, uh, Junxian here? So be towards the far end of the space of the space station that's the russian segment and towards the front of the space station that's the international segment yes. so you can see the the frontmost black thing in front that is where the space shuttle used to dock when it was still in service now uh it will now is now it's captured to the crew dragon i think yes. and cargo the dragon cargo spacecraft and it will soon be docked with the starliner spacecraft also when they are ready to launch so yeah. Soon there will be three. Starliner three. by by which organization? By Boeing. Boeing, a private yeah. uh, American company, Boeing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Ah, like this. <laughs> ah. So this is a, a gathering of many astronauts. Remember, uh, right now ISS got nine. Uh, nine. Uh, no, it's got seven astronauts, but it can take a lot. No, so you can count many here. Is it possible the Earth cannot? All right, because uh, if if this is on right on top. It, uh, is up, below is down, huh? then the astronaut on top will fall down, but in ISS can. But you may say, no, la, this part of the, all the people are actually on the floor of the space station. So on the floor on the Earth, you can actually put the, put the people uh, around. But I will tell you that this is not the floor of the space station. The Earth, the, the, the Earth right now is on the left. On the left is the Earth. But because this rocket is falling uh, uh, around the Earth, and people inside falling around the earth, so there's weightlessness, so that's, this is possible, all right? So you can do that in space, and remember you've seen so many fantastic, wonderful experiments, science experiments, and so on, uh, the astronaut, cosmonauts do, and the Taikonauts do in the Chinese space station for the children in America, in Russia, and in China, all right? Just another one, I explain. 
So remember in 2006, our Dr. Sheikh Muzaffa went up on the, one of the, uh, what you call, uh, uh, expedition, right? So uh, he went up with our, this, uh, what you call, Peggy Wilson, American cosmonaut, Malinchenko, Rus uh, Russian cosmonaut, he went up and this is, his, he's with them, all right? Okay, you want to talk about this, uh, Junjian? Well, yeah, this is one of the experiments that they do in the space station. I forgot what it is, but it has some... Because it's in a glass cabinet and you have to use gloves to physically interact with it, it has it has to have some kind of uh, hazardous material or some kind of material they don't want to get out into the atmosphere of the space station. So they encase this in, the, in a glass box and you only can touch it with gloves. Yes, sir. Okay, huh? Okay, this is, again, you want to talk about this exercise? <laughs> yeah. So, in space, because there's zero microgravity, there's very low gravity, your bones will actually start to lose mass and your muscles will actually start to lose mass over time. So, over the six months that astronauts are on the space station, they will actually become weaker. So, to prevent muscles and bones from losing mass quickly, they have this training system or training harness that they would put on themselves every day. And they'll do a training routine where they would run and lift and whatever. Mm. So to preserve their uh to preserve their muscles and their bones. So the astronauts, uh you American astronaut, Russian cosmonaut, and the European astronaut and the Chinese taekwondoat, they have to exercise every day. And then that means some of you may think, oh, they exercise every day. So when they come down after their shift, huh, they must be very strong. No, because all the calcium they start leaching out from their bones. So the bone getting brittle. In spite of the fact they exercise reg rigorously every day, remember the ISS ship is every six months they change ship. You know? So basically, uh, these astronauts and cosmonauts are doing ship duty in the ISS. Every six months they go up and come down. So after six months they come down, they are very weak, you know. Uh, I remember, let's go back to the other picture. Uh, I remember when Dr. Shin Muzaba came down in Kazakhstan, I think when they found him, they of course they carry him and put him on, on a couch. Lah, all right. He had to lie down there. But I think within a few hours he was able to stand up and walk. Well, the two Russian cosmonauts came down with him, eh? they are held as if they are, a, they are a, like a paraplegic, you know, like a like a weak person, and put on the couch. And they will fly the two cosmonauts to the spa city in Moscow. Slowly they will rehabilitate, strengthen their arm, their body, their bone. So after some time, then only they can stand up and walk. Uh, so not easy, you know, to go to space and come down, you know. All right? A lot of things will change. Not only the bones become weaker, all the, uh, what you call your physiological function, a lot will happen. Practically every organ in the world is affected. One of the main things that happen is when you go out. Uh, later on, I'll show you with the Chinese cos uh, astronaut, uh, okay, like this. Uh, this one, this again, got exercise. Uh, this is a Japanese, uh, uh, what they call, uh, astronaut. Right now, the, the ISS commander is Akihiro Yoshide. A Japanese astronaut. He's a international space station commander. Remember, every mission will have a commander. Means he's the head of the whole team. Any final decision will be made by him. The present commander is uh, Yoshihide. Uh, what you call? Uh, is a Japanese astronaut. So now we come to the food. Now this shows the a picture of the Soviet Union at the time. Food. Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman cosmonaut in space. You see how they eat those days, huh? In the 60s, the American, Russian uh, astronauts, corporate, they eat one what? A toothpaste tube, lah, like this. They press on it, ah, then you have your, your what do you call, uh, 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 potato, not tomato, potato uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, juice come out, and so on. All kinds of things, all by this tube. But nowadays, no, wow, wonderful. So now, uh, Jun Chan, you're talking about having food in, the, in space now? Yeah, so in space, it's very... It's different to having food on Earth because you cannot have like a full course meal, a chicken and whatever, KFC. It's very different. So their food is meant to be really compact when it when it's in the spacecraft and when in space you can eat your tortilla or whatever you have. Mm -hmm. So it's meant to be very compact and very energy dense. So to minimize space and to minimize the uh, weight. So they don't want to... Uh, they don't want to spend they want they don't want to put more weight into space than they need to because they can use the extra weight for fuel for extra experiments or whatever so they will try to make it as energy dense as possible but in 
recent times they have made uh space food more uh more like a food because yeah they they made space food more like a food like in like you see in this picture there's a tortilla and with some kind of meat inside so and then on the bottom right is the dining table all right so nowadays the astronauts cosmonauts are quite uh what they call lucky many of the food they like on the earth like what uh david uh, said just now junjian said is dry but the flavor of the food you can have chicken uh, uh, uh whatever meat all right whatever you can have right in space right so for example the menu of the iss is very good no a lot of item the menu of the tiangong space station also a lot of items all right and then you see this is i would say the pizza before eating the pizza this is the dining table lah. and you see here uh junja i'm sure you can explain why a lot of items are taped onto the table lah. yeah because in space there's microgravity so even a slight touch on the on the object will send it slowly moving across the space station so if your tomato ketchup or or your drink or whatever it's not taped to the space station itself you'll eventually drift away so by looking at the picture most people on the earth especially the the, the kids oh i know the earth is below the table <laughs> no 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 the earth could be on top of the table or the, the earth could be on the top right hand corner of the table so this this uh Iceland's head is actually pointing towards the earth because in in the weightless condition there's no idea of up and down left and right right so this is it so they are before they eat their their tortillas and their pizza they have to they can all put it in space like that they have to catch it no because why microgravity so if you don't uh catch it microgravity will make this pizza float 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 float, float and you have to catch it all right so this is how they eat the fruit lah. the what is it tomatoes huh? uh, eat the fruit all right uh, this is a german astronaut right so again you can you can you can play with the food a bit before you eat them very nice all right and then this is how they drink they drink of course they cannot drink from, from the cup all right you drink from the cup or you cannot open the coca-cola can in the space cup and expect the what uh, the coca cola uh, drink you can drink quite because it's once you open up all the particles will come so it's always through a tube a straw and you see this astronaut on the right you see uh, a ball or leak a drink there stuck to the straw all right like this uh, all right and that was ready there you are this is a uh, 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 what do you call uh, sol a solid uh, what is a leak a solid not a liquid uh, a drink here floating in space and after that what will this uh german astronaut do Take out the straw, put one end of the of the end of the straw to the drink and suck it up. Uh, we have seen a lot of experiments, no? Some of the astronauts in the ice will add on, add on until until the blob of liquid uh, can be up to about 10 cent or not 10 to 20 centimeters in diameter, no? And then they blow on it. What happens? It will vibrate. The blob will vibrate, huh? Will vibrate, and we you know in science, uh, anything vibrating in three dimensions is what? Solid. Yeah, it's a vessel function. So this is an astronaut floating in space on a okay. EVA. So this astronaut is in a spacesuit outside in the vacuum of space. And you can see there's a line here, there's a theta connecting connecting the astronaut to the space station itself so the astronaut doesn't float away. So it looks like the astronaut is performing some kind of maintenance activity on this kind of uh, equipment. So a very a lot of astronauts like doing EVAs because they can see the earth and then they can see the earth below them or to the side of them and they can see the the earth like go they can see themselves go around the earth and the clouds moving underneath them it's a very nice experience i've heard so, this astronaut looks like they are doing some maintenance on the solar panel segments they can see the solar panels to the sides over here and i'm not sure what it is but it's another eva so they have you can see the astronaut has something in the front that is normally where they hold they hold their tools or they hold some spare parts so for easy access so they can hot sort tools uh don't you allow me to add on i say hold on to the same picture yeah. okay so yeah. this is you can see on the bottom right here the thin blue layer of the earth's atmosphere so basically or practically most of the earth's atmosphere from the earth's surface to 100 kilometers high is 100 kilometers thick only so this blue layer of the Earth's atmosphere is called the Earth's atmosphere, 100 kilometers thick. The diameter of the Earth is 12,000 kilometers in diameter. And that means the Earth's uh, diameter is protected by a thin layer of atmosphere and all the human beings 
the fishes in the sea, the birds in the air, the grass on the field, is in this atmosphere of 100 kilometers. So actually, we are in a very precarious condition, no? The Earth's atmosphere is actually very thin compared to the diameter of the Earth. Okay, so continue. Go ahead. So this is, looks like it's one of the American segments or the middle segments, I cannot really tell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can see two astronauts on the side here and the inflatable module on the side is presumably the airlock. So the airlock is where the astronauts will go inside and they will depressurize the entire airlock. So it will go from one atmosphere to okay. zero atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. It will go from one atmosphere yes, to zero yeah. atmosphere. Looks so like an airlock. Yeah. So when they open the door, the door wouldn't fling open and they will send the astronauts flying. So it wouldn't do that. So the astronauts will go out from the airlock and go to do whatever activities they are meant to do. So I just add on, huh? They are doing the same picture. Yeah. No, uh, hold on the same picture. Go back, go back. Yeah. I uh, this one. Sorry. Okay. I understand that. Both the American, the Russian, and most likely the Chinese have a standardized uh, Russian uh, uh, rocket uh, uh, module can dock onto the American airlock. A Chinese uh, uh, rocket module can, can dock with it. must be standardized. Uh. Remember in the movie, movie Gravity, the American spacecraft dock with the Chinese spacecraft because they have a standardized airlock mechanism. Okay, continue. Then go space switch. Yeah. David? Hmm? Yeah. You cut off again. Okay. So this is the Tiangong Space Station. This is the latest space station by China. It's the next success. It's their latest space station and they are successful. Hello, David. Tiangong okay. 1 and the Tiangong 2. Go to space. Tiangong Space Station? Yeah. Okay. So this space station was launched last year in July and has been undergoing construction since then and is currently crewed by three astronauts, I mean Taikonauts which has been launched in a, on their mission Expedition 1, I think Yeah. so you can see all these modules and this is also a uh, segmented design or modular design so they can hot swap these or change different positions if they wanted to or even add more in the future so you can see a lot of solar panels and a lot of uh, modules here. Uh, wait, uh, okay, okay. Stop that. Stop that. Let me say. So I understand the, the length of the of this module is smaller than the ISS, about 73 me, 70 meters. Lah. The weight is about 100 tons. So about uh, one port the, the weight of the ISS, the Chinese uh, space station. And of course, this Tiangong space station, it, they don't call it Tiangong 3, you know. Because earlier, the China sent their Tiangong 1 and Tiangong 2 space station. Those are for testing only. And they all crashed back to the Earth. Lah. So now, they started to build the permanent one, which is Tiangong space station. And not completed yet. 2022, next year only will be completed. Uh, when it's fully completed, it will look like this. Made of many, many modules. Okay? Okay, Junchen, next picture. Okay? Yeah. So, so just continue. The Okay, so the, the person in the center is Ni Hai Xing, the commander, and uh, what do you call it? on the left is Tang Hongbo, and on the right is Liu Bo Ming, right? the other two Taikonos. And I remember the moment when the three of the, the Chinese Taikonos appeared, huh? I saw the face of Ni Hai Xing was Bunka. No? That means huh? this is one of the first signs of this in space. In the fluid huh? in your body, your blood will chill in your, in your face, huh? your head. Your face will look bloated, lah, expanded, bunka. Lah. But now it's back to normal. All right? Anything you want to add? So Junjian? a lot of a lot of astronauts will report this in on the international international space station and on the Chinese space station as well. Is that when you go into space, you will uh form calluses on the top of your foot. Because as you can see, the psychonauts are using their feet to anchor themselves to the to the bottom of the space station bottom referencing the bottom of the frame lah. so because in space you don't really have to use your uh leg muscles as much because you are in microgravity so one slight push can uh 
send you across the space station already. So they just need to anchor themselves in place so they would use their hands and feet just to move around. It's very easy. And we have heard of so many stories uh, of the astronaut cosmonaut in the 1960s, uh, the, the Soviet Union Vostok program, the American uh, Gemini program, Apollo program, and later on the Salyut space station, the Russian one, the Skylab, and then later on the space shuttle. When you are in a multi-day mission in space, some many of the astronaut cosmonauts, some of them can be experienced astronaut. The first one or two days, they will have space motion sickness. Uh. Just like when you are uh, many years ago, when you are, you are young, you travel long distance from Penang to KL. Maybe the, the first half of the of the journey you will vomit, you feel giddy. Uh. So even the experienced astronaut, they will still experience, experience space motion sickness for one or two days. After that, they will usually recover. Of course, they will not explain I say that maybe this astronaut has space motion sickness for the first day. Lah. So if they have space motion sickness, stay quiet, stay in one corner, don't do anything. After one or two days, you're okay, and then you proceed with your mission. Lah. Okay, continue. Junjian, the next slide. Yeah. So Tiangong Space Station is much smaller than the International Space Station. Can you see and... the, the, okay, the next slide, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I explain. Huh? So this is a, a, a scale, a scale down, uh, I mean, comparison of the ISS on the left and the Tiangong on the right. Okay, so basically about one fourth the size, uh, Tiangong space station of this ISS and uh, one fourth the weight also. Are uh. uh, you want to add on anything? Uh, I, do, I don't think I have anything to add on. Uh. Just that the crew capacity is a bit smaller because of okay. the size is smaller as well. Okay, continue with the next feature. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good practice. Okay. So, yeah, Tiangong can take up from three people up to six people, and the ISS can be taken. Uh, can you scroll down again for ISS? ISS can take from presently ISS got seven people, and you can take even more. Okay. So now, can you explain? Okay, ISS can take from six up to nine. Yeah. Six up to nine. Okay. So okay, the Chinese space picture. station is also a modular okay, design. So they have experiments and storage compartments inserted into the walls as well. So the astronauts have a very clean and comfortable space to work in and live in. And they can take the cargo and move it wherever they want as well. And this okay, I don't know the important thing huh? now. In space, huh? either in a single a uh, single space club or in the ISS. Uh, uh, can you go back? Okay. In space, uh, whether it's in a single space club with human being or in a space station like this, Tiangong Space Station, ISS, very important is the air pressure leak. So inside the space station, all over the space station, Tiangong, there are pressure detectors. So the moment there's a leak, uh, that means the leak of air at one atmosphere from the inside one of the, the, the room uh, leaking to space, uh, the pressure will drop. So then the pressure will be drop will be detected and the alarm will go off. Maybe the red light will go off and ying, 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 sound will go off. So they have to isolate where the leak. So sometimes to isolate where the leak not easy, you know. So make sure that there's no leak in the air, in the space because inside here is one atmospheric pressure. Outside is what zero atmospheric pressure. So inside, for example, for, for example at the cupola, inside is one atmospheric pressure. That means. In, uh, in terms of pounds, uh, it's 15 pounds per square inch, you know. Outside is zero pounds per square inch. So the cupola has a big surface, you know. So the pressure inside, right, pushing the cupola out, it may be one ton, you know, one ton of weight, you know. So if the pressure is leaking, uh, they have to locate the pressure and to patch up the leak. So very important is the leak, you know. So make sure whenever they dock one spacecraft with another, the airlock must be fully airtight, no leakage, right? Okay. Junjian, continue. Yeah. So now you can see a Chinese space station astronaut on a spacewalk and presumably also performing some kind of maintenance on the outside of the space station as well. And you can see there are many handrails and many attachments that the astronaut can, I mean, Taikonaut can hook themselves to so they won't float away. Now there's a saying, uh... In, in space, uh, whether you are doing a spacewalk or inside the space station, space is a very unforgiving place. No mercy. 
it, they cannot even tolerate even a mistake. So once you make a mistake, the consequences will be terrible. So you have to be very careful. Meaning what? So all these taikonaut, astronaut, cosmonaut, they will have rehearsed whatever they have done hundreds of times or thousands of times on the Earth before they go into space and carry out their mission. Nah. Okay, continue. So usually like the American astronauts, when they perform this training, they'll go into this uh, into this swimming pool, like into this big swimming pool, like, basically, where they have a training, uh, where they have this uh, model of the ISS or something submerged underwater so they can actually practice pulling out this thing and installing another thing or performing the same kind of maintenance but underwater and it's called the zero buoyancy lab i think neutral buoyancy lab yes neutral buoyancy lab. So, so now we have actually the csi chinese space station uh, now we have the csi chinese space station uh, expedition one so now the, the expedition one mission three months nearly over so the chinese space station is three months shift work so very soon, the three Chinese Taikonauts will come down and the ship number two will go up and the three Chinese Taikonauts will go and replace them for another three months. All right, soon. Huh? Okay, continue, uh, Junxian. So, fast space station, we have Mir, Skylab, Salyut 1 through 7 and Tiangong 1 and 2. So, uh, you want to talk about Salyut, Dr. Chong? Salyut. Yeah, Salyut. Okay. So remember, the moment when the Russians went into space, man, Yuri Gagarin in 1961, uh, man, first man in space, uh, the Russians already planned. So later on, they want to have longer term mission in space. Remember, I remember there was a Russian cosmonaut who was in space uh, non-stop for one year, no? More than 365 years in space, you know? So this is the longest space one. So on the right here is the salute and on the left is of, of course the Soyuz uh, uh, crude mod module. So that was uh, the design of the Salyut 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven of the, the crude Soviet Union uh, space station, small space station, because it, as long as you orbit the space for many uh, 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 weeks and months or years, uh, it's called a space station. And in a space station, you can do a lot of space environment experiment, Science experiment, industrial experiment, and so on. All right. Okay. The next one, uh, Junjian, next picture. Okay. So, this is another design of the solid. They're basically the same. So, if you look at the solid one to six, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they, they did different experiments. Okay. So, next one, next one. Junjian, next picture. Yeah. And on the ground in Soviet Union. So you see, it's like this, uh, how it looks. But what is the size of it? Wait till I show you the size. Uh. Huh? This is a full scale module of solute on the Earth's surface. Go, next picture. Okay, this, uh, so this is another picture of the, the solute. All right, see, with the solar cell, uh, a lot of details here. And on the left is, of course, the Soyuz. Huh? Man, uh, cool module, why? So basically, it's always attached to emergency. La. Anything happen, huh? the three cosmos quickly will go inside the module and come back to the Earth. All right? If for emergency, just like now, on the ISS, you attach to it the Russian Soyuz module for emergency purposes. All right? But now the ISS got seven customers, seven people, you know. Can the uh, uh, Junjian, huh? can the Soyuz module you know, attach to the ISS people accommodate seven people? Huh? One Soyuz mm -hmm. accommodate seven people? I don't no, think so. Huh? The Soyuz so can only problem, you know? three at most. Ah, so if ah, so if there's an emergency, uh, let's say seven now in the ISS, not all seven can be, be saved, you know. You have to send uh, another one, another uh, Soyuz module or the crew dragon to attach to another another port uh, to save the, the rest. Okay, next yeah. picture. Ah, this is the, the size, the shape, the, the size of the Soyuz compared to the people on the ground. This is in one of the, the rocket assemblies uh, uh, station in Soviet Union and see how big it is. Okay, salute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we go to the next one, Skylab, the American one. Uh, Skylab. Uh, you want to speak on this? Oh yeah, okay. So Skylab was, the, the Skylab missions were the, well, the last missions where the Saturn V flew. So 
the entire Skylab module is basically a converted third stage of a Saturn V rocket. So they would basically take this entire stage where fuel and oxidizer and all the stuff would be to con they would basically take the entire rocket section and make it into a space station and take out the engine as well. And they would launch this entire thing into space. So you can see this solar panels in the cross configuration and I guess those are the radiators on the side. Of course, the Skylab was in the 1970s by NASA, and the Salyut was in the 1960s and 1970s by NASA. All right, and I remember in one of the mission, the Russian uh, uh, spacecraft even docked with the Skylab, isn't it? Yeah. Docked with the Skylab. So in the 1970s, they have collaboration between the Soviet Union and the Americans in space only, in space only, not on the other surface in space, where Russian and American spacecraft would dock into each other. And exchange astronaut and cosmonaut. Even in the Mir space station, also this happened. So Mir, of course, was in the 1970s, 1980s. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, this is another picture of Skylab. Skylab. Yeah, all right. Soyuz. You can see the Soyuz and the Apollo spacecraft dock on the dock to the station as well. The Soyuz would be launched yeah, on yeah. the Soyuz launch vehicle as usual, and the Apollo spacecraft would not be launched on the Saturn V. It will actually be launched on the Saturn 1B launch vehicle because they don't need such a big rocket to go into low Earth orbit. They only need in, they only need a smaller rocket, so they will use the Saturn 1B instead. Yeah. Okay. And this is a real life pool picture, actual exact picture of Mir space station. Now Mir in Russian means peace, right? Now remember Mir was 1970s, 1980s, or I think in the early 1990s it was deorbited. And fell down into the southern Pacific Ocean near Tahiti in in the South Pacific, and many of the Russians were very sad that it was the obvious. What happened? It burned. It burned completely in this atmosphere, and the big chunks uh, fell onto the into the ocean, South Pacific Ocean. All right. So this is the second largest space station ever sent into space. The largest space station sent into space, of course, is the ISS. So when fully constructed, near was the second largest space station. But when the Chinese Tiangong Space Station is fully constructed next year, its size uh, in terms of the, the area and the weight will be similar to Mir, right? Tiangong Space Station next year, 2022. Okay. Again, modular design. You see, this is another real picture, right? The earlier one was looking down on Mir with the Earth as a backdrop. But this is looking up into Mir with the, with the empty black sky as a backdrop. Okay. Next picture. Uh, this is a, I find this a more beautiful picture of Mir. So nice, you know. Very big, you know. Very big. Hmm. And remember, in 1995, uh, we are the members of the Astronomy, Astronomy Club of USN. And that time, I think CKN and uh, CKN and this, uh, I think CK, Chung Chep also with us. So there was an announcement that the, uh, what is it called, Dafo Maslan brought the Mir a, a big real size mock up of the near space station and many Russian Soviet Union spectra to Shah Alam. We all rushed down to KL and we enjoyed exploring inside the near uh, what I call module and many other spectra. Okay, next picture. Uh, this is again another picture of the near inside the near. All right, you see, and there's a cosmonaut there, on, uh, cosmonaut on the top left hand corner. Okay. Okay, the next picture. Uh, this is actually in, in Russia. There's one of the exhibit of inside the mirror. Inside the mirror, all right? Uh, next one. Uh, one of the cosmonauts inside the mirror, all right? So mirror has a, uh, has a what do you call, was a pioneering space station, <coughs> all right? So in a sense, International Space Station is in a sense, continue where mirror ended, International Space Station continue, took off. All right, next one. Now, remember in 1995, in a place called Sumo City, Sha'alam, they brought the Russian space ex exhibition to Malaysia. Next picture. <coughs> next picture, Junjian. Yeah, it's already. There you go. Yeah, it's entering the, the, the door, main doorway. In Sha'alam, we all rush there. It's a, it's a kind of a big warehouse. Lah. 
uh, 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 factory storeroom, few storeroom, the warehouse, and then they 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 had the exhibition in the Sumo City in Shalom. Next one, next picture. And this is an entrance. You can see here some of the 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 Russian rocket here on the on the right and on the left. Next picture. And there you are, one of the Luna court, Luna rover by Soviet Union. And this is the exactly one one is to one a size model, you know. Exactly, if you just land on the moon, it should look like that. So we were there for the whole day, morning, afternoon. So many people all over Malaysia flocked to Sumo City in Shah Alam to look at the Russian uh, space exhibition, 1995. All right, next picture. Okay. This is outside one of the mirror module. You can climb up the, 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 the staircase and you can go inside. You can go inside the module. You can see all the control inside. Very nice. We already enjoyed it. Next one. There you are. I see a lot of people there. Right? Uh, so the big space club were all up here there. But on the ground, there were so many other Russian. The Venera space club that landed on on dinner, the one is to one life size model, and many other rockets and uh, what they call uh, uh, what they call devices were on display. All right, I think the exhibition was for one month. Okay, next one. Okay, and this is, I don't know what is one of the one of the segments. Uh, one of the segment. Next one. Or oh, AP means associate press. Uh, this is a granite. I think the Russian got one of the space car called granite. So this is a full sky ski model granite. Now remember, this was in 1995. This is the old space exploration technology. But it was in Malaysia and it's not a mock up. It's an exact one is to one life size model brought to Malaysia. So I think all together in the whole exhibition, other than near, you have 100 other objects on display. All right. Uh, next one, Junjian. And Dato Maslan was there. So she explained to, to Malaysia, you can see this video on YouTube, you know. So okay, AP here means Associated Press. So she explained, we're very happy that the Russian brought to Malaysia. We were so happy, all right. So this is the Russian space exhibition in Sumo City, Shah Alam, 1995. Next one. Ah, this is, of course, the ladder going up. Next one. And this is, of course, the cosmonaut space suit. And the human being next to it. Okay, next one. Junjan, next picture. Yeah, it's already, I already scrolled to ah, This is inside yeah. one of the modules. So this is one of the, I am very surprised because, man, yeah, many of the people helping to maintain it. So uh, the, the security guard, the usher to, for the XB, they, what, they all wear like, like as if they're going to space, you know. So this is one of the usher, right? I think he's trying to clean up one of the panel, which is a bit dusty. So they actually can go inside. It looks like that. I think this could be part of the near space station, right? Uh, next one. Ah, uh, this is again another one of the one of the parts of the rocket, all right? Next one. So we go to the past uh, uh, space station. Remember a few years ago, China sent their Tiangong One. So in front, of course, it's the Tiangong One. So this is a, this whole thing is the Tiangong One space station, right? Where the Chinese Taikonot went inside there for 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 some time, right? Occupied it to do experiment, and then the astronaut came back to to the ground, and the Tiangong One was the the big module was pumping in space and burning the Earth's atmosphere, and caused a lot of uh, worry on the Earth, huh? Huh? People were worried that part of the Tiangong will fall them, but basically it fell into the sea. Next one, that was the past space which So this is the three Taikonauts, two men, one woman in Tiangong one. Next one. So basically on the right, on the on the on the left is the Tiangong one space station, and on the right is the uh, Shenzhou crew spacecraft to dock with the Tiangong one space station on the left, and the one in the center is the return capsule. So the one in the sun. In China, 
Okay, on the right side here, the command module will burn in the Earth atmosphere completely, right? But the crew module, the the reentry module, where the three Baikonur are in, will land on Earth's surface. Okay, Tiangong One will orb orbit the Earth until it de it deorbited by natural decay, lower and lower Earth's atmosphere and burn up the atmosphere, and the remaining part plan into the Earth's ocean. Next one. Junjian, next picture. Ah, there of course is Tiangong Two, are similar to Tiangong One. So again, after Tiangong One, uh, mission over. So China set up their Tiangong Two mission, which they have here. The what they call this on the on the one near near to us is the Tiangong Two space station, and the, the far end is of course the Shenzhou, uh, what they call spacecraft. Right. So this is the one, and of course they also had uh, uh, many uh, long time mission in space. And I remember when the when the the crew module landed into Earth safely again in Inner Mongolia, but this Chenggong uh, two was tumbling in space, and many people in the world was worried. But fortunately, it landed uh, in the in the ocean, and uh, nothing dangerous happened. All right, uh, next one. And uh, this is the 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 Taikonos in the Chenggong two uh, space station. All right. Next next picture. Now we come to the most to me the most important is the future space station. So, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, this is not over. I remember I started to know astronomy in the 1960s in the high school when I started to read science fiction. When I read about man uh, going to the moon, permanent lunar uh, man space station on the moon, permanent man space station on Mars, and finally man's exploration. And exploitation of the whole solar system, the planets, the asteroid, and so on. So in future, the the American, Russians, and Chinese are also planning future space station. Let's see what are the future space station. Uh, Junjian, the next picture. Uh, the first of course the Luna Gateway, which is a multinational joint venture between the American NASA, the European Space Agency ESA, JAXA. The Japanese Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency (CSA), and of course the International Lunar Research Station. But this is not this Lunar Gateway and all the other space stations we mentioned earlier are orbiting in space. Orbit, they are actually orbital space station, orbiting around the Earth, and Lunar Gateway is orbiting around the Moon. But the International Lunar Research Station, maybe you cannot really consider as a space station if you're on the Moon surface, but because it comes with so interesting and fine. So I included it because the Russians and the Chinese are planning to have the permanent lunar base on the moon, called the ILRS, International Lunar Space Station. So Junjie, maybe you can explain the lunar gateway. Yeah. So the lunar gateway is a very interesting. It's a very, it's a very interesting project they are taking on. It's basically a space station that is orbiting around the moon, and will serve as the hub. Or the uh, gateway, as it's very aptly named, between lunar orbit and lunar surface. So you can see the Orion capsule docked to the right hand side, and you can see the uh, what looks like the national team's lander on the on the upper on the upper side of the station. So the Orion spacecraft will carry astronauts to the lunar gateway, and they will. Of course, on the left is the moon. On the left yeah. is the moon. Yeah, on the left is the moon. So. They will transfer the astronauts from the Orion spacecraft to the lunar gateway, and some of the astronauts will stay behind at the gateway to perform lunar experiments or something like that. And some of the astronauts will actually descend into the lander, and there are a few landers that are that have been assigned contracts. It's it's kind of a sticky situation right now, but one of the contenders is Blue Origin's uh, national team and SpaceX's uh, Starship. I mean lunar Starship variant. So both of these will be. Both, one of these or both of these might be docked to the lunar gateway and will serve as the lander to take astronauts to the lunar surface. I just add on, huh? I just add on, uh, John. Yeah. So now the Americans have planned that by twenty twenty four, in three years time, three years only, they have the Artemis program by NASA where they will land on the moon, American men and women astronaut, and of course after landing one must come back to the spacecraft lah, and come back to the Earth safely. Twenty twenty four in three years time, right? So it's the Artemis program. So the Lunar Gateway is a support of the Artemis program. Okay, continue, uh, Junjian. So the Orion spacecraft will be launched on NASA's SLS rocket, Space Launch System rocket, 
it'll be a very big, very orange, very powerful rocket. And the others have not really been uh con have not really been assigned a launch date yet. But NASA's Orion spacecraft will be either launching at the end of this year or early next year. This will be the landing segment and it's currently it's currently up to debate who who has the landing contract right now. It's either the national team or SpaceX and they will either serve the landing purpose of taking astronauts to the surface. And the PPE or propulsion segment, power and propulsion element or halo. Uh this segment the Luna Gateway is not just for the man to to assemble. So it, this will not be assembled. This will not be assembled at one go. So this station is also a modular design, and the PPE and Halo spacecraft will be launched on the Falcon Heavy rocket in the next three or four years. So uh, let me talk about this, uh, uh, Junxian. So this is a Russian and China, uh, uh, what is called a plan. This is the plan is just only just proposed, not not fully uh, 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 researched yet. So China and Russia will come to joint venture. They have an international lunar research station, permanently manned, human man, space station on the moon. All right. So this is the lunar rover. All right. And uh, and the top left hand corner is not the moon. Nah, it's the Earth. The Earth as seen from the Moon now. We are from the Moon looking at the Earth, all right? So, this, this, now this will take many years to, to be to, to be uh, to become uh, uh, work, workable. Next one. This is another uh, uh, picture of the ILRS International Lunar Research uh, Station by Russia and China. So again, modular design, all the solar cell and so on. So these are many many parts, huh? So in you know what? So this is a mini lunar human colony, where human beings can live permanently there. Right, so the whole idea is uh, basically we know that sometimes we know that if you want to explore the solar system, the first place to go is the moon. So the moon is a stepping stone to go to the solar system, right? The moon gravity is very weak, one six the Earth's gravity. So you want to harvest the, the material to build rockets, the water to grow the fruit, and build your rockets on the moon and launch it to the other parts of the solar system is much easier than to launch from the Earth to the solar system. The problem with the Earth is, Earth has a strong gravity. So to climb up of the gravitational well of the Earth, you need a lot of energy. But the moon gravity is one six. So to climb up the gravitational well of the moon is very little. So to send one kilogram from the Earth surface to Mars, you need a lot of energy. To send one kilogram of mass from the moon surface to Mars, you need much less energy. All right, it's non-linear. So that's why, it, to go to the Mars and the asteroid and the solar system, you have to go to the moon first. Uh, next one, uh, Junxian. So another picture of the lunar uh, ILRS in future. So it's still very, very fluid. There are no definite design yet. So we see what the, what Russia and China are going to, 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 to bring forth in future. The ILRS. Huh? Okay. Next one. Uh, this is another one for well, lunar colony. This is Earth. Okay. Of course. Another one which they never said, why want to build a glass dome here to maintain one atmospheric pressure where outside is a vacuum? Why not you build all the whole moon base underground, underground the moon surface? So you build everything underground, you don't need to build all this structure which is very costly. So another one is tunnel underground below the moon surface. From the top you look down, it's nothing, just a moon surface. But all the colony is below the moon surface. It's easier to build it that way. Okay. Uh, next picture. Uh, this is now this one is uh, we saw in about two or three weeks ago. Big news, you know. In the Chinese Weibo chat group, uh, you can see that uh, uh, China they have a small announcement that they are they are they are still at the at the top, still at the talking stage. Uh. They are spending about twenty five million US dollar to look at the rough design. They want to build the uh, Mega structures in space, All right? Because uh, these are the smaller structures. They say that they are talking about building the mega structures in space up to the length of one kilometer long structure or two kilometer long structure in space, you know. But that will be in future. So that means in future we have big structures in space. I, imagine uh, 
You remember the International Space Station in 100 meters in length. Imagine you build an ISS of one kilometer in length. Now remember, ISS, uh, the magnitude seen on the Earth uh, at night is minus four, no? The, the, the brightest uh, magnitude of Venus. So imagine you have 10 times bigger ISS. So it's about, because it's not linear, so it's minus 4.0, you have the plus and another minus 2.5. So in other words, in future, you have a one kilometer size object in space orbiting around space at 400 kilometers from Earth's surface. Its magnitude on the Earth would be magnitude minus 6.5. The brightest object in space, huh? all right? So that'll be great, but this is in the future. So if that's uh, if possible, huh, then what next come will be true. That means what? Space city, lah. the orbiting space city, orbiting the Earth, where people can live, <clears throat> they can enjoy life, and then you can have hospital, library, <laughs> sports, and so on in space. I don't know whether we need our generation. So what we have been reading in science fiction in 1960s, when I was uh, when I was studying in, in a lower secondary school, may come true in very soon, you know. One kilometer size space station in space, you know, or longer. Can you imagine? Okay, next picture. Uh, now this. Now remember, years ago, uh, do you see this movie, uh, Jun Zhen, Independence Day? Yeah. Uh, There's uh, an uh, alien civilization, the bad one, invaded the Earth and attacked the Earth. And they showed the whole spacecraft uh, ooh, over New York City. This is Manhattan. And you look at it, the diameter of, of the space station is of the alien spacecraft a few kilometers across. La. So remember, this one, they sent it from another, another star system or another galaxy and entered into Earth's orbit and hovered over New York City. So in future, you can have spacecraft or space city orbiting in, in space built by human beings. Possible. All right. Next, next picture. So any picture of the alien spacecraft over Manhattan. You see, so big. All right. Next picture. I uh, remember in 1970s, uh, I was student in USA. I, I watched this movie many times. This, uh, this is an iconic movie you must see, you know. Uh, 2001 uh, Space Odyssey. I don't want to give you much, much uh, information. So basically, he, so man already got a big space station, many big space stations orbiting around the Earth. And then the man landed on the moon and discovered an obelisk, a state structure, funny looking, like metallic shape on the moon and the, and the information from the obelisk say that on Jupiter something interesting is going to happen so in the movie the later part of the movie they they, they fired another space space car called Odyssey one towards Jupiter where they met the alien civilization and you have the famous Richard Bowman the astronaut American astronaut in Discovery one talking to the supercomputer called HAL, H-A-L, HAL. It was a very interesting computer, no? uh, the, the sequence, you know. So this, the movie, A Space Odyssey, is so famous that it, there was an, a sequel, you know, 2010, the sequel, the next uh, episode of Space Odyssey, 2010. Okay, so next picture. Sunjian, the next picture. Yeah, it's there. So in the movie they have here, Earth on the left, you have the space station five blood in that movie, yeah, uh, 1968, where diameter of each ring is about 300 meters, three three, three times longer than the uh, uh, ISS uh, diameter 300 meter. That means in terms of area is nine times the area of the ISS. The next one, next picture. So, the. I lost connection, huh? Okay. Yeah. So now, so remember in in the ISS, in the Chinese uh, Tiangong Space Station, in all the previous space station, they are astronauts all floating in space because weightlessness. But this no, the rotation every 61 second. So we are on the rim here, it provides one zero. Huh? So in future, you may say, no, lah, I, I don't like to go to space because I've been zero G for, for six months. No. Here is rotating at 61 second, 300 uh, meters in diameter, 1G. So you are on the Earth, provided you're on the rim. If you go towards the axis of rotation, it becomes 0G. Zero, zero Next picture. Uh, sir, so now you have a space shuttle, not space shuttle, huh, in the movie. Eh? 201, the space odyssey. 
this uh, uh this rocket is going to join at the center with the space station five okay so this uh space station five in the movies are what a hotel hilton hotel <laughs> space station five so many other things inside there for research for 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 en enjoyment and for maybe for for people who cannot take backbone back because one G on the earth will create a lot of back backache problem so they want to solve the problem of the Z, the strongness of the line in the space station five blah. so this is space station five and you can see it and with a with a backdrop of the earth with the clouds and everything it's a very nice it's a very nice photo so and this you can see another photo of space station five so you can actually do some back backhand calculations on the size of the space station and if you want to create one year at the rim you need to rotate how many times per second or what is the period of rotation so and these are the astronauts that are supposed to be docking with space station 5 hello Dr. yeah okay so now this is uh the uh what do you call the, the, the look like the space shuttle thing but don't docking with the this is a uh, uh, docking with the space station 5 in the movie or uh, the music also in the next picture and then closer to the space station park, docking here. Okay. So this is 300 meters in diameter. Okay. Space station park. Next feature. Uh, closer. Ne closer. Next feature. And uh, there you are. You can see in the distance, uh, the floor is slowly curving up, curving up. It's a huge circle of forest of 300 meters in diameter, rotating at one period in 61 seconds. Therefore, the artificial gravity central picture force is 1G. Lah. So this lady is 60, 60 kilograms on the Earth's surface. In this place, is also 60. So she can walk on it, on this curved floor, easily. The only problem is the floor is always curving up, curving up, curving up. So it's slightly curved all around. Okay? Okay. Next picture. And then, so later on, in the picture, they saw that there's a strange obelisk. Remember last year they saw they they said that they saw a few places in in the American desert in Romania and other places the obelisk. Uh, I think somebody going to play uh, uh, the April Fool joke on the people of the world. Uh. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So so now this is discovery one, right? So it's going towards Jupiter, uh, one hundred and sixty uh, meters in diameter, <clears throat> and this movie, yeah. Uh, created a sensation when it came out all over the world. Even the Soviet Union scientists were impressed by it. So if you have not seen this movie, please see. And please see, please see the sequel, 20, 2010. Eh? Have you seen this movie, 20, 2001? I haven't before. <laughs> Must see. And if you want the 2010, I will, I will give you. So basically, the author, Arthur C. Clarke, came out with this, this 2001, A Space Odyssey, the first book. Lah. We saw fantastic the movie. They asked him to write a second uh, story 2010 the year they reached contact so after that they like it so much they asked him to write a third book called 3001 3001 so but it was not turned into a third movie lah. so there were three books and two movies our uh, next picture Shunzhen? so here you can see the the engine segment i would i would think of the discovery one uh i have not much to say here because i don't have I haven't watched the movie before, but you can see six engines over here and it's supposed to propel this spacecraft to Jupiter or somewhere it wants to go. Oh, and I've seen the uh, movie breakdown of this. They actually constructed this giant, this giant circle and this entire prop set will actually rotate as the, as this guy is walking, uh, as this guy is walking. So this camera, will be attached to a singular point on this on this giant rotating cylinder. So as this rotates, the guy will always be standing upright. But the because of the rotation and the camera moving, it will appear as though this guy is just this guy is running around the cylinder while the camera is stationary. It's a very nice effect. So this is another spacecraft space station. I'm not I'm not sure what this is. But it has another rotating segment where one could generate artificial gravity to... Hello, Doctor. Okay, continue. Go to the last picture. Son. Okay, some of you might say, oh, this is the, this is the Death Star uh, one in the Star Wars uh, movies uh, in, in film. This is what 
the Death Star by Darth Vader lah. Remember in the in the in the Star Wars series there were two two Death Star. The first Death Star the diameter is 120 kilometers in diameter. You no, know, this spacecraft. You know. So this is not a ball. You know, this is a mag, this is a kind of a city in space. In another episode, the first uh, 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 Death Star was destroyed. So they built that brother built the second Death Star, 160 kilometers in diameter. So oh. now, so now in future, uh, humanity explore the whole solar system with the space station in space on the Earth, on the planet surface, and so on, on the comets, on the etc. and so on. But this is they were sent because until they build the warp drive. Which is faster than speed of until today there's only one possibility they can go faster than speed like the alq bear drive presented in 1995 by the spanish physicist called miguel alq bear that you can use the the theory of general relativity to build a warp drive that means traveling faster than speed of light all right so that is, but then in some of the science fiction writers say before they can build the warp drive the traditional way is you send a spacecraft of like in the Death Star 2 in Star Wars City, 160 kilometers in diameter. Meaning what? On the left is Penang, on the right is Ipo. On the top of the of the of the sphere is KL, on the bottom of the sphere is Malacca. So inside here, you may have maybe here 30,000 people living. Lah. So fire it from the from the earth at a very fast speed, like Voyager 1 or 2, and going towards some of the nearby stars. The problem is. Even with Voyager 1 and 2, uh, the speed of Voyager 1 and 2, if you go towards, say, Proxima Centauri, four liars away, it will take 80,000 years with the current rocket engine to go from Earth to uh, Proxima Centauri. So this is, a, this is a scenario. So in future, they will travel from Earth before they have the warp drive that can tunnel through space-time, like Star Wars, right? So the old technology, the normal rocket, traveling at the speed of Voyager 1 or 2, going towards a nearby star, say, Proxima Centauri. So generation after generation of mankind or people will live and pass away. And maybe after many generations, then only they will reach that another star. So that's the story we read in science fiction. Nah. That was many years ago. Yeah. But of course, yeah. Okay. okay. So now we end now. So I think about end now. So basically this is about the the present space station, the past space station, and the future space station, with the with the understanding that the end is not even the lunar uh, 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 gateway. The end is not even the Russian ILLS station on the on the on the moon. The end is they will send the space station all around the solar system, land on all the objects in the solar system, employ maybe after many generations, and then after that, what's it? Time to think of a way to go to the nearest star. But that is. The destiny of mankind. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Lah. So this really opened up the minds of many people. Excitement. And why? Within our lifetime, this may happen, you know, ex man exploration of the solar system. Okay. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are from the Astronomical Society of Penang. Uh, if you want to join us, we have a we have a member submission form where you can submit to be a member and there are a few membership perks as well. It, you can join us for free as well if you want. Uh, we have some kind of, we have some activity sometimes, but we have to uh, social distance ourselves and limit ourselves as well because COVID is still a thing. But we still try our best to provide activities such as this live stream on YouTube or some kind of other activities that you are, yeah. So be sure to check out our Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us tonight again.